extremely common nowadays to see people texting and doing selfies and communicating in various ways, listening to podcasts, listening to music, doing all sorts of things while they engage in other activities or going to dinner and texting other people or making plans, sharing information. That's all wonderful. It gives depth and richness and color to life. But it isn't just about our distracted nature when we're engaging with the phone. It's also a way of layering in dopamine. And it's no surprise that levels of depression and lack of motivation are really on the increase. Everything that we've talked about until now sets up a an explanation or an interpretation of why interacting with digital technology can potentially lead to disruptions or lowering in baseline levels of dopamine. I can use a personal example for this. I happen to really enjoy working out. I've always really enjoyed it. But in recent years, I noticed that if I was bringing my phone to my workouts, then not only was I a little bit more distracted and not focusing on what I was doing as much as I could have or should have, also I started to lose interest in what I was doing. It wasn't as pleasurable. I would feel like it just didn't have the same kind of oomph and I was beginning to question my motivation. As I started learning more about this relationship between the peaks and the baselines and dopamine, what I realized was that some time ago I probably experienced a incredible increase in the amount of dopamine during one of my workouts because I enjoy working out and I enjoy listening to music. I also enjoy listening to podcasts. I also enjoy communicating with people. Those are all wonderful pursuits, but I had layered in too many of them too many times and then it essentially wasn't working for me anymore. Much in the same way a drug wouldn't work for somebody who takes it repeatedly because their baseline of dopamine is dropping. So at least for this calendar year, I've made a rule for myself, which is I don't allow my phone into my workouts at all. No music, at least not from the phone. It can be in the room. I might listen to a podcast in the room, but I don't listen to anything or engage in anything on my phone, no texting whatsoever. And most of the time, I just don't even bring it with me for that period of time. It's only a short period of time. I'm not training that often. This is something that I think has been misinterpreted as people can't be alone now. People talk about, oh, you know, they can't walk across the street or they can't go anywhere, ride the bus, can't be on the plane without being in contact, they can't handle just their thoughts. I don't think that's really what's going on. I think what's happened is that we achieved the great dopamine increase that comes from this incredible thing, which I personally enjoy being able to communicate by phone, by text and exchange pictures and send links and these kinds of things, social media. But then what happens is it doesn't have that same fulfilling aspect to it. And it tends to remove the excitement and the pleasure of the very activities that we are engaged in. So. I know this is a hard one for many people, but I do invite you to try removing multiple sources of dopamine release or what used to be multiple sources of dopamine release from activities that you want to continue to enjoy or that you want to enjoy more. And now you understand the biological mechanisms that would underlie a statement like that. It takes a little bit of working with. I know it can be challenging in the first week or so of not engaging with the phone during any kind of workout. That actually was really tough. But now I'm back to a place where I enjoy it that much more. I also feel as if I conquered something in terms of the circuitry related to dopamine. I now understand why something that I enjoyed so much had become less pleasurable for me. And there's a deep, deep satisfaction that comes from understanding, okay, there wasn't anything wrong with me or the, what I was doing or anything at all. It was just a, there was something wrong with the approach I was taking, which was layering in all these sources of dopamine and dropping my baseline. For this very same reason, I caution people against using stimulants every time they study or every time they work out or every time that they do anything that they would like to continue to enjoy and be motivated at. There's one exception, which is caffeine, because as I mentioned before, if you like caffeine, that actually could be a good thing for your dopamine system because it does upregulate these D2, D3 receptors. So it actually makes whatever dopamine is released by that activity more accessible or more functional within the biochemistry and the pathways of your brain and body. However, a number of energy drinks and in particular pre-workouts contain things that are precursors to dopamine and on their own, even if you didn't engage in the activity, would cause the release of dopamine to a substantial degree. They do cause the release of dopamine to a substantial degree. And over time, that will deplete your dopamine. So energy drinks, pre-workout drinks, drugs, of various kinds that people take to study and pay attention. We talked about some of these for the ADHD episode, things like Adderall, Ritalin, Armodafinil, Modafinil. 
taken repeatedly over time will reduce the level of satisfaction and joy that you get from the activities you engage in while under the influence of those compounds. I'm not trying to demonize those compounds for their clinical use. What I'm saying is taking stimulants and then engaging in activities that you would like to continue to feel pleasurable is undercutting the process. And inevitably, it might not happen tomorrow, might not happen in a month, but inevitably you will have challenges with motivation and drive related to those activities. Now, some people can keep it right in check. They can just do the one can of the energy drink or they only do their pre-workout before really hard days, for instance. More power to you. I actually do that sometimes, frankly. But people who are trying to get into that peak, super motivated, driven, driven state, really focused every time they engage in an activity, you are absolutely undercutting the process and you are undermining your ability to stay motivated and focused. So just as we talked about intermittent reward schedules a moment ago, intermittent spiking of dopamine, if you do it at all, is definitely the way to go. And chronically trying to spike your dopamine in order to enhance your motivation, focus, and drive will absolutely undermine your motivation, focus, and drive in the long run.